What's going on YouTube? Today I want to show you guys how to build an e-bike from scratch. Well, I'm going to show you guys how I built an e-bike from scratch. I'm talking about something like this. This is not done yet. It's still being built. It's still being, it's still being built. Uh, but I'm going to show you guys the process where I got all my parts. Uh, this is going to be a two part series, a two or three part series. I'm going to show you guys from the beginning where I bought the frame, um, all the parts that I'm going to be using and how I put everything together. Now, like I said, this thing is not done yet. I'm trying to build a, a storage for the middle part right here. So I'm building, I'm molding a cardboard and then I'm going to mold an ABS plastic. But to take it back from the beginning, first of all, all the parts that I use is going to be put into in the next video because some parts, I don't know if they're going to stay on this bike for sure. And some parts, uh, are gonna stay as the parts I'm gonna return and exchange so that's why I'm not gonna put the parts just yet but I'm gonna take it back to the beginning when I bought this frame and now I started modifying it so yeah stay tuned so I just received this packaging from China it's time to cut it up and and see what this frame is about so this is the frame that I bought from China it got here pretty quick actually I gotta remove all this I don't know if these are stickers uh they are not stickers. I'm gonna remove them though. I'm gonna find a way to remove them. Yeah, let's go. Now, some of this, uh, some of them don't come with a back seat or suspension, but the version that I got comes with a back seat and a suspension. This is what I'm putting in there right now. So I put one of my old motors on it just to get a fit an idea. You can see that it's not all the way down just yet. There's a little bit of a gap. Same as on this side, you can see it even more here. The thing is not all the way. So I'm gonna have to make some modification to allow this to go in all the way and this is supposed to be a 190 millimeter dropout but i think they give me a 195 millimeter dropout which it's fine i guess it just means that i can put wider tires on the back but if your dropout is a little bit too wide these things can easily be pushed in uh and use the bolt to hold it down so just thought I showed you, showed that to you guys. So this is the profile of the bike so far. Obviously, that's not the motor that's going on it. Uh, that's a thousand watts, but I have two thousand watts that would be going on the motor. And that is not a suspension fork that is also going on it. The one that is going to be going on it, um, I still haven't received it in the mail yet. So that's just. Uh, just to kind of see what it looks like, how it feels. The seat is a, uh, it's 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 not as soft as I was hoping it would be, but uh, the quality is much higher than I expected. I thought there was gonna be like a small layer of foam and then the, the rest of it was gonna be like wood, but no, the, everything is actually all foam. It's not memory foam, but it is foam. So this would do for a while. The suspension though, it looks good, but the suspension is trash. Maybe I have to take this off, adjust it, but for now, based on what I felt, that suspension is trash. So that's something else I'm gonna have to remove. Overall, I'm pleased with the frame, considering 
uh, how cheap it is. This right here, uh, it looks big. I don't know if my control will be big enough for it, but as you can see, there's a little bit of a indication that this is cheap, but I have a welding machine. I can weld this back on if I need to weld it, but I mean, if a control is sitting here, it'll, it'll be fine anyway, so I probably won't have to weld it. But if I have to weld it, I have my welding equipment. And once again, that's the exact reason why I went with a metal frame because I have a welder. So uh, I have welding equipment. So if anything breaks or bends or if I need to adjust something, I'm gonna weld it. For this middle part right here, I don't know if I'm gonna buy a cage for it or build one myself. Either way, I like the fact that it's metal. I can easily work on this. So I've been building the bike and the battery which is up top right here and the motor just got here. So this is the new motor that is going to be going into that. That's a thousand watts so that's going to get replaced and that's the battery. So now I'm going to have two e-bikes but this is going to be faster for sure. So. My battery is from Motor Goat. As you can see, it was just recently made. I will tell you later in the video why I chose to buy a battery from Motor Goat. There is one specific reason why I chose to buy a battery specifically from Motor Goat. They have a trick up their sleeve which allows this 60 volt to be more powerful than almost any other 60 volt out there. So I'm guessing this is, what else is this? Oh, they have a dual battery balancer. This is great, comes with it. And this is the charger, I suppose. Yes, it is a charger. Oh, I guess this would be a good reason to, this is a good time for me to show you why I chose Motorgoat specifically. So, Motorgoat's 60 volt battery charges up to 71.4. That 71.4 will allow the battery to give you a little more pep on your top speed. Just a little bit more top speed than a regular 60 volt. A regular 60 volt charges up to 67 or 68 volt whereas motor goats 60 volt charges up to 71.4 that would allow you to have a higher top speed than any 60 volt out there you know as long as you have uh a controller that allows you to push out the max current you know but yeah that's why i chose the battery from Motor Goat, and also because it's from Motor Goat, I, I talked to the, I don't know if it's the owner or somebody that works there, they told me they use Samsung batteries, which is pretty uh, reliable, and I believe they are working to get this UL certified, I don't know what this sticker is, but, you know, it's a it's an e-bike company, so they're pretty reliable, that's why I chose to go with this company, and I didn't even know about this. So this is cool. This is really, really cool. And this is the new motor. The new battery is charging right now. And yep. So here's another modification I have to make. This is the enclosure for where the controller is supposed to be. Well, my controller is much bigger than the box. There is no way it's gonna fit in. It's wider than the box. And if I try to put it sideways, it's still too tall. It's too tall to the point where the seat will not be able to go up here. 
So what I'm gonna need to do is find a way to make this worth it. And what I plan on doing is, I plan on cutting this right here and inserting this. So, as you guys can see, I cut that bottom part and I resprayed this black. That way the paint stays protected because this is metal. Whenever you cut something on this, you never want to leave it exposed. Otherwise, it's going to be more likely to rust, you know, if you leave metal exposed. So, I resprayed it back up and this thing now fits in perfectly. So now it fits perfectly and therefore the seat can go on top and not be in the way. Now because I had to cut the bottom, it sticks out a little bit, but that's fine. It's actually going to hit it and cool in anyway. Keep in mind that this thing is actually waterproof, so it's not going to be affected. And there's going to be a mud guard going underneath. So it's going to be perfectly fine and safe. So before mounting everything else, I decided to go ahead and put the LEDs on and they look great. Now I didn't record how I actually put these LEDs on because I've already made a video on how to put LEDs on your e-bike and make the LEDs run off the uh, primary battery that comes with the, the bike. In my case, I'm going to be using a 60 volt battery and these LEDs are going to be running off that 60 volt. Right now they're not plugged into the battery, they're just actually plugged into an outlet, but I'm just testing them out and uh, they look good so far. Due to spacing, I added this to the back of the controller. Underneath, you can see it using duct tape. Now, it is duct tape, but it is very, very secure. It's, it's not going anywhere. This is actually Gorilla Tape. But what essentially is, is a controller box. This is an old controller box I had that I actually made smaller by cutting it into uh, two pieces and using Gorilla Tape to attach it back together. I realized I could actually put it to the back of this and extend it. That way I can put more stuff in here. Now this is where the wires are going to be. Here I plan on putting um, some step down converters and possibly an alarm but yeah that's why i added that box so far so good i got a back led lights on the back turn signal and brake lights and you know all that stuff this here are going to be additional brake lights i have my led strips front and back yeah okay so i just put the seat and both wheels on just to kind of get a better idea of what this thing looks like and boy this is uh <laughs> this is much bigger than i thought uh i don't even know if my legs are going to be able to if my feet are going to be able to touch the ground i'm only 5'9 the crazy thing is when i was buying this frame i was i had this fear in my mind that I'm gonna get it and the frame is gonna be way smaller than um, than I was hoping, but it is a complete opposite. Not only is the frame quite adequate, I think that the frame is, is, is definitely bigger than I expected. Um, and from my measurements, I think this is an exact replica of the, as far as size wise, it's the exact replica of the uh super 73 rx because this diameter the the diameter here is the exact same as the super 73 so i can only assume the rest of it is the same as super 73 and they did build this bike as a copy of the super 73 but yeah so far so good and another reason why i'm glad that i put the wheels on just to get an idea is now I realize I have to buy a whole new kickstand. This, this kickstand was supposed to be temporary, you know, for like a few weeks, 
but this will absolutely not work for a few weeks. Like I need to get it ASAP. This LED right here, I wired it and I drilled a hole and plugged it right into the hole. This is all being water, waterproofed. So yeah, I like how I did this. It looks professional because I soldered it and I used heat shrink. But yeah, I'm kind of really proud of this so far. All right, so I wired this LEDs to activate whenever I press the, uh, the brake lever. That way I have two brake lights instead of just one because I I just even though it seems quite bright I just feel I just feel like I needed more brake lights. However, I end up just scratching it and not using this for brake lights because for some reason the step down converter keep burning out the brake levers. So this end up turning into a daytime running light. This is the headlight that I chose to go with. It's extremely bright and it looks beautiful. So I've been building this bike for the last two weeks and what I've come to realize is that building a bike from scratch is a lot more difficult than upgrading a, an existing e-bike or a regular bike that is turned into an electric bike. When you have to start from the scratch from a frame, you encounter so many challenges. I mean, even upgrading a regular bike, you do encounter a lot of challenges, but it's a lot more when you have to start from scratch. This is two weeks later, and it's still going strong. This is not the battery that's supposed to go on it. The battery that's going on it is the is uh is that one right there. He does everything right. So and far, time, when you go, what are you doing? Yeah, he's a hard, he's a hard adjustment. If you're gambling, you don't know which guy's going to show up. Here's one for you. There, this is, they actually obviously agree with you. Is Kevin Hall is a minus two eighty five against uh, how do you say his name? Olichuk. Mikhail Olichuk. Mikhail Olichuk. He's plus two twenty five. Yeah. So Kevin Hall is a minus two eighty five. Yeah, that would be about right. Yeah, I mean, look, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna probably go, if you were to pick a lock of the week, who would be your lock? Right, actually, let me think. Grant Dawson right now is minus four seventy, and Joe Selecki is plus three forty five. If you had to take someone off of this off of this fight card, who would be the one fighter that you would say, you know what, this is the guy that I think that is gonna win for sure? Kevin mm. Hall. So that is it for today. Hopefully you guys stick around for the next part. That way you guys can see a complete list of all the parts that I use for this bike, the finished product, uh, the top speed and all kinds of stuff that I want to do to this bike right here. If you're looking to build one of this, something that looks like this, definitely subscribe, smash the like button if you like this. Stay tuned guys. Thank you.